Today's topic is very important. Everybody comes across uh, with a backache. Everybody sees a lot many patients um, every, in every practice, every day practice. So I'm working at the moment with uh, Hayat Memorial Hospital. Uh, the topic is MRI evaluation of the low back pain. And we will be discussing imaging modalities which are involved with the low back pain. Then the clinical presentation guidelines and few cases. The imaging modalities are the radiographs, which are very common, CT scan, scintigraphy, and the MRI. And uh, what about the bony anatomy? We can see with the x-rays, alignment, any disc uh, distance in between the vertebrae, then disadvantages, radiation, non-specific osteoarthritic changes in uh, most adults. Uh, diagnosis that can be made in AP and lateral view, compression fractures, spondyloelasthesis, disc degeneration, facet arthritis, tumor, infections, and disc spaces. Uh, we can also see spondylolysis, uh, facet arthritis, and foraminal stenosis in the cervical spine. And for the lumbar spine, we got to do normal uh, flexion and extension views as well. Then the bone pathology is uh, picked up by scintigraphy. It is better uh, to be seen with SPECT scan. And uh, this will show you the, uh, the uh, osteoblastic activity or the, some infective process involving the vertebral bodies. Then the CT scan, bony anatomy can be visualized very well. Cross-sectional view of the spinal canal and the foramina we can see. These are the foramenae and the spinal canal. Then the disc and the thecal sac and the nerve roots. Spondylolysis is a stress fracture of uh, the pars interarticularis. It is best evaluated by MRI with T2 weighted uh, uh, fat suppressed imaging. And it can also be seen when the fracture is there, then uh, it was CT can pick up. Then if, if it is bilateral pars fracture, it will lead to uh, spondylolisthesis that may be grade 1 this one is showing you grade 1 uh, spondylolisthesis L5S1 so cross-sectional imaging CT and MR confirms the extent of the degenerative disease and the spinal stenosis search for the confirmatory finding in patients with specific radiculopathy if uh, surgery is contemplated occult black back pain not responding to conservative treatment rule out the tumor infections in appropriate patients. So the disadvantage is radiation, non-specific. Most adults have the findings, like you mean, everybody can go in and have, definitely some finding will be there. So poor visualization of the individual neural structures and the disc anatomy as compared to other imagings. So this is the radiation involved in the radiological procedure. X-ray is 0 0.02 millisievert, lumbar spine, uh, X-ray takes more radiation than the lumbar CT takes 10 times, 10, 2 to 10 uh, microsievert, which is very, very high. Then the bone scan also takes the higher uh, radiation. Uh, the MRI gives you bony anatomy and alignment, bony pathology, multiplanar imaging uh, view, spinal canal, foramenae, disc hydration, neural structures, cord nerves availability this advantage is the availability and the cost is very high pacemakers claustrophobic but it is a routine investigation at the moment so these are such just a few examples of uh, sagittal and uh, axial images for uh, the lumbar spine with a normal t2 weighted image let me tell you then we when the mri started sir Aru Karshi sir, in pakistan 94 so uh, we used to uh, mentioned T1 T2 weighted, this is a weighted sequences which are used in MRI, but we used to get the feedback from the people that you have, uh, we are asking for T7, T9, T12, so we, you are giving us a T1, T2 weighted image. So it is a normal sequence which is there in the MR. So, but anatomy, you can see the alignment, uh, intervertebral disc spaces are uh, uh, very well seen on T1 weighted. T1 weighted is the black one CSF here and then the T2 weighted is a white one 
it's the CSF. This is a sequence which uh, gives you different, different contrast of the imaging to delineate the pathology. So MR gives you a best view for the anatomy and T2 weighted gives you better pathologies. So we can see the nerve roots. These are the nerve roots. You can see uh, just an um, oval shaped. In the center, there is a nerve which is exiting. Then at the periphery, you will find uh, fat, fat uh, around the nerve and the vessels around the nerves. So the disc one is darker on T1 weighted image than the vertebral body. So this is an axial view which is giving you a facial joint, uh, then uh, the disc space, nucleus pulposus and uh, annulus fibrosus at the periphery, then the exiting nerves. Causes of the back pain and the sciatica. There are multiple causes. We will be discussing in more details as well. Just an uh, overview. Paraspinal muscles and ligaments. Synovial joints. Facet and uh, sacroiliac joints. Disc disease. Tear of the annulus fibers. Specific nerve and impingement. Spondylosis. Spinal stenosis, foraminal stenosis, bone disease, then the tumors, infections, and the fractures. Second most common complaint to the primary care physician is the acute back pain. More than 70% of uh, the adults will suffer it at once in some, some point of time. 90% will resolve without intervention and imaging most without the specific treatment. Among patients with sciatica, only 10% will need surgery. And uh, now we will be discussing clinical presentation in more detail. The classifications are divided into three categories, non-specific low back pain, back pain associated with radiculopathy, and back pain associated with the specific causes requiring prompt evaluation. <coughs> Uh, specific, non specific uh, low back pain is acute less than 12 weeks and chronic is uh, more than 12 weeks. Ligaments, muscle strains, interventional disc degenerations, and osteoarthritis, facial joints, back pain associated with the radiculopathy. It can be unilateral, it can be bilateral. So, unilateral acute nerve compression is in sciatica, leg pain more than the back pain. Uh, disc herniation, unilateral chronic nerve root compression disc herniation or the spinal stenosis. So bilateral chronic nerve root compression, spinal stenosis and differentials is vascular claudication, bilateral acute nerve compression using quadraquina syndrome which is very very important. So bilateral acute nerve root compression that is the quadraquina syndrome, massive disc protrusion, sequestration, these are the causes, sudden onset of bilateral leg pain, sudden anesthesia, rapidly progressive and uh, severe neurological deficit, motor deficit at more than one level, fecal incontinence and the urinary incontinence. You all see all these patients every day. So, uh, uh, the cardioquina, the cancer, vertebral infections, vertebral body compression fractures and ankylosing spondylitis. The clinical scenario, cancer, vertebral infections that will have fever, IV drugs, recent infections, then uh, vertebral compression fractures. These are all cardiac patients and steroid use, old age, ankylosing spondylitis, seronegative SPA, non mechanical inflammatory type of uh, uh, back pain, uh, morning stiffness improved with exercise, alternating buttock pain, waking up at night and younger age group. The guidelines. <clears throat> Common theme, the triage of three broad categories described, that is non-specific low back pain, radiculopathy and specific low back pain. And red, that is called a red flag. So what is red flag is? That is a quadraquina syndrome. Weight loss, severe symptoms and not settling, fever, recent infections and uh, symptoms, osteoporosis, steroid use, non-mechanical pain and in children. So I won't go into this detail of this one. 
So in, in this one, you can see which modality is to be used for which kind of uh, back pain. So if there is non-specific low back pain, you don't need anything like that is your treatment. Radiculopathy will lead to, definitely we need MRI or CT scan. And then the cardioquina, definitely MRI. The cancer patients, they also need MRI, x-rays and other tests. Then the vertebral infections, definitely MRI is the surgery of choice. Vertebral compression fracture will need x-rays. And kylosing spondylitis will need x-rays and uh, pelvic MRI. The disc disease after 40 years, most adults have at least some desiccation and loss of height on the lumbar discs. Low signals on T2 weighted image posterior and diffuse bulge and protrusions are common jelly-like nucleus material leaks out through the tear in the annulus fibers. This is the nucleus pulposis in the disc center. Then the periphery is encased by the annulus fibrosis. So in this one, the annulus fibrosis at the posterior respect of the spine have more uh, neurological elements than the anterior and, and the vascular as well, vascularity as well because of the plexus of the venous plexus. So anything which inserts the disc here will lead to a very painful situation and then the, there will definitely be part of the bleeding as well for the disc protrusion or herniations. Uh, the first step that takes place is uh, the compression de uh, um, desiccatory changes. Then the pressure comes on the uh, on the on the um, arthritis. Then the spinal stenosis, ligamentum flavum hypertrophy, because that compensates uh, the facial joints uh, arthropathy association. So these are the different terms used for the disc uh, description. There are uh, multiple dozens of uh, terms which are used for uh, the description of the uh, disc bulges, but the most commonly are central disc herniation, uh, broad uh, based disc her bulge, paracentral disc herniation, foraminal disc herniation, and uh, on, the, on, the, on the right lower you will find uh, a broad-based uh, right left paracentral disc bulge which is causing foraminal stenosis and recess narrowing and similarly this broad-based uh, moderate to massive disc herniation on the left side causes uh, neural recess and the foraminal stenosis. This is the nerve root which is uncompressed on the right side but this one is definitely leading to some neuropathy or radiculopathy. <coughs> so the glossary of the disc pathology I already discussed herniations the disc bulge, then the protrusion. The disc bulge is uh, just uh, a part which is coming out of the nucleus uh, fibrosis. Out of the alignment of the PLL is elevated. Uh, and when we see this uh, protrusion, in the protrusion, the nucleus pulposis is uh, coming out into the fibers of uh, the annulus fibrosis, but the annulus fibrosis is intact. And this has more wide base and uh, uh, focally impinge on the nerves and the thecal sac. Extrusion is uh, the nucleus material pushes out beyond the posterior longitudinal ligament but remains in contact with the disc space. And uh, this extrusion is, uh, does not cover the annulus fibrosis but it, uh, it is free to move into any, any space. And uh, the apex is wider than the base likely to impinge on the nerve roots and sequestration is a disc fragment isolated from the parent disc. We will discuss all this in details as, far, as well in the pictures as well. So this is just an overview of uh, the disc uh, terminology, central, paracentral and the foraminal and the lateral. This is a CT scan of, uh, uh, through the disc space causing bilateral foraminal annular disc bulge, as you can see, all around and causes uh, foraminal stenosis bilaterally. So this one is a broad-based disc bulge. Uh, you can see here L5S1 causes uh, bilateral neural recess for not narrowing and foraminal stenosis, definitely impinging upon and compressing the nerve roots, which are about L5 and S1, more on the left side. And this one is another example of a uh, normal root, a uh, nerve root on the right side, left paracentral broad-based disc herniation or bulge. Uh, this is causing compression of and displacement of the nerve here. 
and this is the nerve which is displaced on the other side that was really ha definitely having some radiculopathy or numbness, whatever. <clears throat> so this one is uh, paramedian dysprotrusion on the uh, dysprotrusion. This one is the nucleus pulposus, little bit white you can see and is coming out and but covered with the annulus fibers. So this one is uh, the disc protrusion which is right paracentral and pushing the, um, the thecal sac posteriorly causing bilateral foraminal narrowing more predominantly on the left side. This one is the foraminal narrowing uh, because the disc protrusion extrusion is at the level uh, of the foramina compressing of the exiting nerves which are uh, at uh, normally at L4 and L5 levels. So this is extrusion which doesn't cover the uh, annulus fibers. This one is important. This is a mushroom type of uh, disc protrusion, extrusion you can say, because the disc does not have uh, the annulus fibers around and it's, uh, it may be subligamentous or transligamentous at L5-S1 level. This is so big that one, one get frightened that what to do with it. So if you just wait, for a couple of months, it regresses. In majority of the cases, they have regressions history very well. So spondylosis is a degenerative disease. Disc desiccatory changes, bulges, protrusions, you will see ligamentum filium hypertrophy, facet arthrosis and hypertrophy. These are the sequences of spondylosis and degenerative spondylolysis is seen in 7% of the uh, patients osteophytes formations all combine to cause stenosis of the spaces that the nerve roots and passes through. Canal and lateral recess foraminal stenosis. This one is another example of the nerve root compression on the left uh, paracentral space. Uh, right one is uh, the normal which is the fat here but over here the fat is obliterated and the nerve is compressed on the left side. This is, these are the nerve roots, cardiac quina, within the thecal sac. Then CT scan showing you a parrot, parrot beak appearance or eagle beak, beak appearance of the facer joint which is normally not like this. So this, will, uh, this is definitely having arthropathy. We call it a mild, moderate and massive depending upon is hypertrophied depending upon what level. So this is because of the stress and the spondylotic changes. Uh, spinal stenosis symptoms are uh, neurolog neurogenic uh, claudication, pain relieved with sitting behind, uh, bending forward, progressive pain, radiculopathy, cordyquina syndrome, low back pain, non-specific measurements to define it in the lumbar spine, many improved with the non-surgical therapy. Contributing factors are already discussed, disc bulge, protrusions, facet joint arthropathy, ligamentum flavum, hypertrophy, posterior vertebral, bony osteophytes, anterior and lateral. Then spondylolisthesis we discussed earlier. This is an example of uh, spondylosis, degenerative changes, disc desiccation, reduced disc space at L4, L5, causes bilateral foraminal narrowing, ligamentum film hypertrophy, and mild facet giant arthrosis, mild to moderate facet giant arthropathy. This one is uh, the grade one spondylolisthesis. Uh, this is the forward slip of uh, one vertebra over the other one. But you see here the disc. It looks like this is a disc herniation, disc bulge, but this is a, a, this is a zudo disc bulge. And uh, you have seen the uh, foraminal uh, anatomy that is uh, just an oval shaped. But once this uh, uh, anatomy is disturbed because of spondylosis, spondylosis that uh, brings back to the rounded shape and the fat is displayed, the nerve roots are compressed with the, with the disc which is in intervening. And this one is the example of the severe spinal stenosis because of the spondylolisthesis. So in the report, uh, we will be looking at uh, the facer joints uh, may cause, that is uh, common in older patients may cause pain radiating to hip and simulating sciatica, predisposes to dynamic instability, contribute to spinal and foraminal stenosis, mild disc bulge and protrusions. Very common incidental findings are facet sciatic, focal sciatica, spinal stenosis, 
and uh, usually not significant. So look for the key words and description. Spinal stenosis, foraminal stenosis, nerve root displacement, compression, impingement in the report. No specific root involved. Uh, does it correlate with the symptoms? So what to order? C T or MRI? MRI is generally preferred. Contraindications to MRI only the claustrophobia or C T or, or some pacemakers. C T is an acceptable substitute for disc and the bony disease, but poor for infection and intrathecal tumors. MRI we do with contrast, and that is universal indication is uh, when there is suspected infection and the tumor and post-operative patients and recurrent disc and the scar tissue. <clears throat> then spinal uh, epidural infections, high-risk populations, immunocompromised, endocarditis, sepsis, these are the post-operative patients. Tuberculosis, not necessarily immune compromised. This is an example of uh, the bacterial uh, discovertebral osteomyelitis showing you T1 weighted image. Then this is the T2 weighted image. You can see the necrotic tissue inside. The vital body is eaten up and the disc in between is white. And then uh, there is erosion of the lower down vertebra. Then subtle paraspinal mass formation and the axial section with the post contrast you see uh, the central necrotic area, but here the annulus fibers which are the circumferential uh, involvement with the inflammatory changes. So this is a uh, uh, discovertible osteomyelitis. So this one is another example of the tuberculosis uh, uh, the discovertible osteomyelitis, which is very common in Pakistan and in pediatric patients we do see multi-level involvement of the uh, spine cervical, thoracic and lumbar spines because of uh, the sore throat, because of uh, the hematogenous cause and this one is uh, involving this, these two vertebrae. Then uh, the drug users or some uh, infection which leads to the muscles at the paraspinal muscle on the right side you can see the loss of anatomy in this side, the pressure effect on this side as compared to the left side, then the post-contrast image will more delineate the abnormality or pathology. So uh, uh, then, then uh, the T2 weighted image, we can always pick up the small minor pathologies by MR. So the compression fractures can be benign or malignant. Often difficult to distinguish because of uh, the acute compression fractures, history of osteoporosis, Osteoporosis may indicate multiple myeloma in patients without risk factors, history of the primary tumor, MRI good for survey of the marrow and other levels to look for other metastasis. The rule of thumb in a benign versus malignant fracture in the spine is that once the compression fracture occurs, it does not uh, penetrate into the posterior uh, thecal sac space. So one, it is, when, when it enters into the posterior thecal sac space and occupies the posterior elements, that goes in favor of uh, the malignant fractures. So the bone scan uh, may serve some functions. <clears throat> Compression fractures can be acute or chronic. Many, uh, you might be seeing a lot many patients who are osteoporotic and they fall and then, then they have the fractures. So it can be acute and chronic. So uh, this cheapest evaluation is check the old films. Bone scan can provide uh, fracture in is old. May remain positive for up to two years. An elderly may not be positive in the first day. MRI can detect acute marrow edema. This is uh, the T1 and T2 weighted image that will pick up uh, the findings if there is any stress or any injury to the, to the bony structures. Uh, T1 will show you the black which I showed you earlier, the CSF is black and in the T2 the edema will be white. So it will be, uh, it is shown as acute in the chronic stage because uh, the loss of edematous uh, changes. So the signals may not be changing. <clears throat> then the metastatic disease. Uh, you can see the whole of the lumbar spine is involved with the, uh, with the, with the change of the signals. This should be dark, the disc should be darker on the marrow than the marrow which I already showed you one example before. So here it is uh, iso intense to the vertebral bodies. So the vertebral body is darker than and is iso to the uh, disc, disc. 
the tumor brighter on D2-weighted image enhances with contrast. Exceptions are sclerotic prostatic metastasis, which don't show you the same signals. Uh, sudden, 68 years male, sudden onset bilateral leg pain and weakness, and the cause was urinary retention. This one is uh, an example of uh, an image, sagittal and axial images. You see some, the disc spaces, some, some, some disc desiccation and disc bulges, but here is something abnormal. Yeah, something, uh, this is, this is extrusion of uh, some neurological, uh, this uh, neural nucleus pulposis which is coming down and causes uh, the stenosis left, broad base, left paracentral disc and recess foraminal narrowing, and this one causing neural compression. So this uh, is again a T1 and the post-contrast image. Uh, this was uh, the massive sequestrated segment. Sequestrated se segment is uh, the disc material which is coming out and is separated from the parent disc. So it can come downward, it can go upward. That can lead to, from, for example, from T5, I mean uh, L5, it can go up or down. So uh, the primary of the lower cord, spinal, the nerve, dura, and vertebral bodies can be involved, the tumors, and then the trauma. <clears throat> These are the few examples, 30 months male, showing you Cada equina syndrome with the uh, uh, intradural and uh, uh, some, some neurological tu tumor in the form, in the, uh, and 60 years male, female, which is uh, intradural extramedullary tumor. So this one is uh, 70 years male with the uh, extra dural tumor which is compressing the cardi equina. The cardi equina are the nerve roots which are from, uh, which are coming out of the uh, L5, uh, L2, L3 levels from the conus medullaris. 62 years old males, severe back pain, rapid onset febrile and unwell four weeks ago underwent abdominal surgery for perforated diverticulitis. So this one shows uh, uh, abnormal signals L5S1 level with the T2 weighted image here, then the, then the T1 and post contrast shows you paraspinal mass formation as well. Axial coronal images showing you the source abscess on the right side, then the L4 and L3 and L4 vertebrae are involved. <coughs> Uh, before the MRI, we used to do this uh, very much uh, in Pakistan. Now it is just um, very, very rarely used. This is a myelogram and the disc bulge at uh, disc herniation or disc bulge at uh, L lower lumbar level gives you the cord equina, brush tooth appearance. So, but the MRI, this is replaced, totally replaced. So this one is another example of a diffuse disc bulge at L5S1 level with annular steer. Annular steer means the fibers are broken. So this one is another example of a, a thickened phylum terminal. You see, these are the thickened fibrin terminals. This is uh, because of the arachnoiditis. Could be because of any cause like infection. And this one is a, a neural crest tumor enhancing in the lumbar spine at L1 level, uh, intradural and extramedullary. This is a shavanoma. The other uh, is a neurofibroma, also present like this. Then there is the X-ray of the lumbar spine showing you some abnormality here in the posterior aspect of the vertebrae with the foraminal widening. So we did uh, the MR for this and this revealed uh, T1 uh, T1 dark and T2 high signals, this turned out to be arachnoid cyst. So this one is again another sequence T1 and T2 weight image in the thoracic spine showing you a high signal on T1 and a certain low signal on uh, darker on the T2 weighted image. The, uh, weighted image. This is the intradural lipoma. The other one is uh, intramedullary lipoma. Then this one is important, and this one is the, in the lower lumbar spine, the vertebral spaces, uh, uh, you can see the posterior uh, wedging of posterior size of the uh, disc spaces and uh, the vertebral bodies. They show high signals, then some dark signals here, then some... <laughs> the, so this turned out to be a maxillopapillary ependymoma. Thank you very much, sir. I